Hi everyone, David Aragona here with the August 23rd edition of Horses to Watch as we carefully look for trips for races from the past week, horses that encountered adversity and could be worth betting back when they run back in the future. This week I'm taking a look at four replays from this past week at Saratoga and continuing with the theme of turf races that I was talking about on last week's show. Same situation with that inner turf course at Saratoga with the rails set at zero feet so horses racing right down on the hedge and if you weren't in that inside path or close to it for most of your trip, you weren't going to have pretty successful result results this past week. Horses that got wide trips just seemed to be doomed on that inner turf course. So three of the four replays that we do take a look at will be from inner turf races. We're going to kick things off, though, with one race that did take place on the Mellon turf course. That's the outer turf course in Saratoga. It's a race from last Thursday, August 18th. Race three, a New York bred optional claiming 45,000 nominative of two other then for the Phillies and Mares going five and a half furlongs. Let's break these runners from the game. We're going to take a look at the head-on replay for the entirety of this race, focusing on the number five, Fontana Freda. You could see right there, got squeezed a little bit between horses. She threw her head up in the air right after the start, kind of got pushed back towards the tail end of the field. And from here on out, she is just never going to be able to save any ground. I talked about how the rail was the place to be on the inner turf course. Saving ground is always a good idea in turf races of any kind. And even on this melon turf course that was playing more fairly, you don't want to get a three to four wide trip like this. And you can see heading around the middle of the far turn here, she is legitimately four paths off the rail, no cover, just trying to move up outside of horses while having to cover more ground than everybody else. And she's going to come into the stretch here. And the trouble's going to get a little bit worse because she spun widest of all coming off the far turn. And she's attempting to make a run, gaining some ground through the stretch here. But you can see as they come onto the wire, she's going to sustain a pretty hard bump from the horse in the white cap that's going to come out for running room right about here as that horse veers out into her path and you can see she just gets bumped right out of that one's path and uh, out into the center of the turf course as they come onto the finish line now she did get moved up by disqualification as that horse that bumped her in the late stages was disqualified from third down to fourth as those two were changed in position by the stewards but I just think overall Fontana Freda's trip did not work out for her wide every step of the way covering all that ground and this was her first time moving up to this N2 allowance condition and she'd actually gotten a pretty similar trip when she won her prior race against n1 expos so even though she won against a weaker field in her prior race i think she ran a lot better than it seems by going so wide on the turn Hopefully she can break that habit next time. I don't know if it's just something that she does, the way that she runs, or if she's just gotten into some bad circumstances. But I think Fontana Freda is subtly in a lot better form than it might appear based on these last two efforts. Let's move over to some of those inner turf races that I talked about at the start of the show. Moving on to a race from Friday, August 19th. This was race two. It's a maiden claiming 75000 for the uh, Phillies and Mares going a mile and a 16th on that inner turf course. Let's break these runners from the eight. We're going to focus on the number eight, Lady Firefoot. She is a horse who is making the second start of her career, and you might remember her because I actually highlighted her on a previous episode of Horses to Watch for her debut performance, and this is now her second appearance in her second start as she again got a poor trip in this race. You could see coming out of the starting gate, drawing the outside post, post position is not ideal for this inner turf course, but her rider, Javier Castellano, really did her no favors by not trying to go forward or backwards, not really attaining a position heading into that clubhouse turn. And he just ends up going three to four wide all the way around that turn. And again, proceeds in that path for the entirety of his trip here, which is just not something you can do over this inner turf course. Like I said, he was dealt a bad hand by the post position, but you don't want to get caught out in no man's land like he ends up on Lady Firefoot here because she is just covering all this ground uh, over, a, over a path that's just not the place to be on this turf course. Now, she is a horse that had sprinted five and a half furlongs in her debut and had kind of gotten an awkward stop and start trip that day. It ran better than it seemed, and she seemed like the type to me that would really appreciate this stretch out in distance as a daughter of Temple City with just a big physical frame to her, seeming physically like a horse that would really relish the added ground. And I think she did here. She took a step forward from a speed figure standpoint in this race, but just not able to attain any kind of 
result, because of the wide trip that she sustained, you saw her coming nearly widest off the far turn here. And she does get passed by some rivals in the stretch here, including the eventual winner who closes down the center of the turf course, though that one had saved some ground earlier in the race. And you really did have to save ground at some point during your trip to be successful on this inner turf course last week. Lady Firefoot crosses the wire sixth of eight runners in this race on the step up to that $75,000 maiden claiming level. But like I was saying, ran a lot better than it seems. And I think this is a filly that does have more talent than her two results would make it appear. So I look forward to her getting maybe to Belmont Park, or I should say Aqueduct at Belmont in her next uh, start as they have moved at Belmont Park meet to Aqueduct and hopefully just getting a better trip when she resurfaces at a similar level next time out. Let's move on to Saturday at Saratoga, August 20th. We're going to take a look at the last race of the day, race 11. This is a claiming 35,000 going a mile and a 16th on the inner turf course. Let's break these runners from the gate. It's going to be a similar story here with another horse that is unable to save ground, and that is the number five, El Mayor. And people who follow my picks at Saratoga, you'll notice that I'm highlighting a few horses that I did have interest in, horses that I did pick on top. And I don't like to only focus on horses that I picked because there's a lot Lot more going on in these trips, but I do think that these are three horses that were decidedly unlucky, and that's the case here for El Mayor. As you can see, he is just way too rank heading into the clubhouse turn here. His rider, Julian Lefru, was trying to get him off the pace and settle inside of horses, but that was just a recipe for disaster because he wanted no part of settling in behind those runners ahead of him, and he's just kind of unable to tuck inside, and this horse ends up running up on heels, going wide into the back stretch, and things are going to get worse from here, and as he continues to race keenly down the backstretch, trying to move up, uh, despite the fact that his rider is restraining him pretty aggressively, even now, midway down the backstretch, you can see Julian Lebrou in those green silks with the yellow sleeves is just leaning back in the stirrups, unable to get this horse to settle at any point in the race. And as they proceed towards the far turn here, he is going to end up going four to five wide all the way around the far turn, which is just something you could not do on this inner turf course last week. You had to save ground at some point during your trips, and you can see as they head for the quarter pole here to the top of the stretch, he is probably in the sixth path now as they move off the far turn here. That is him widest of all in that green cap, and he has nothing left at this point after racing in that disadvantageous wide path over that ground that was not quite as favorable this past week. Uh, he just is going to pack up and finish, I think, 11th of 12 runners in this race. So clearly a horse that was not able to achieve any kind of effective result here. But given the trip that he got, I really don't think we know how well he could have done in this race with a better trip. And this is a horse who, based on his past performances, you might not think he's much of a turf horse because his numbers on turf really don't look that much better than his dirt numbers. But he had run a lot better than it seems in his prior race on turf back in May, a race out of which many horses have come back to run significantly higher speed figures in their subsequent starts. El Mayor just didn't get a chance to follow that pattern here, given the trip that he got. But he is the younger half-brother of City Man, who is a graded stakes winner on the turf. I think he really deserves more of a shot in future races on the turf. Just needs to get a better trip than the one that he worked out this past Saturday. Let's move on to one more race from this past week, a race from Sunday, August 21st. Race 7, it's an optional claiming 62,000 non-mourners of two other than going a mile and a half again on that inner turf course at Saratoga. And this is actually a horse that I did not pick on top that I still think ran pretty well in defeat. Let's break these runners from the gate for this 12 furlong trip. And I want to focus on the number 5, Kineños, who breaks towards the back of the pack, which is not that surprising for him. He is a deep closer who tends to do his running from last place or near thereabouts in his races trying to pass most of the runners in the field but because he was stretching out to the mile and a half here in a race that did not feature that much pace you can see that he's not really settling the way that he normally does for, again, jockey Julien Leperu towards the back of the pack, and he's going to get pretty keen trying to run up on heels here as the pace continues to slow down, heading around this far turn for the first time, and he's just never able to get inside, and you can see he's kind of in that place you do not want to be four wide coming off the turn here, racing without cover, which is something you don't want on the turf course. Uh, you know, that's something that gets talked about a little bit in harness racing. It's the same principle in turf racing. If your horse is not following somebody else, they don't really get the chance to relax the same way that they would if they were kind of in behind horses, not seeing that daylight, that clear racetrack in front of them that tends to make horses get a little bit more fired up and keen. You want your horse in a long marathon race like this to relax in behind runners and be the 
follower rather than the leader, especially for a horse that has that late kick that they often like to produce, like Canenos. And you can see he's just getting the opposite kind of trip to the one that I just described, racing up on the pace now, clear racetrack ahead of him. He has settled a little bit better now that Julian Lepru let him expel some energy by racing up to the front end, but he had to pass the entire field in doing so. So he's not going to be able to produce that same late kick that you were accustomed to seeing from him in his prior races when he was reserved back in the last place. And furthermore, this is that inner turf course where you really did want to be on the hedge, racing right down on the rail throughout, and horses that were not doing so, not able to achieve results. And no surprise that a couple of the horses who are in the trifecta here, including the eventual winner, the number three, Balthus, were saving ground for the entire race. The number three and number six who are on the rail right now are the two that are going to battle it out to the wire in here. And you can see Canenos, again, proceeding in that two path, but given the work that he had done early in the race, just not able to produce a kick here. And you can see he's already coming off the bridle as they get past the quarter pull here. He's going to kind of fade a little bit through the stretch. Not completely disgraced here, but again, not able to achieve a result given the trip that he got. He is claimed out of this race. He had been with Tom Morley. He was claimed out of this race by trainer Mike Maker. And we've seen Mike Maker do very good work with horses that he claims out of turf marathons like this. So I'm not going to be surprised if he's able to rekindle the positive form that we had seen Canados produce in some prior races four different connections. So I think that he's one that we could see it produce an improved effort wherever he shows up next time out, not necessarily in New York because Mike Maker does also participate quite a bit in Kentucky. But I think Canadius is a horse that off this trip, we will see it do better in his subsequent performance. So those were all the horses to watch for this week. If you want to follow these runners moving forward, you can add them to your horse watch on DRF.com and get email notifications when these horses run back in the future. Thanks for tuning in this week and make sure to catch future episodes of Horses to Watch on upcoming coming Tuesdays during the Saratoga meet.